Well, good morning, Faith Family Church. It's good to be back on this uh, very hot and humid summer day in Hong Kong. <laughs> so we complain about the rain, then we complain about the heat, but doesn't everybody? That's okay. It's, it's good to be back. Uh, if you know, my wife and I had been in the United States for a couple of weeks, traveling around, visiting some uh, churches and some pastors that are very interested in what's going on in China because they have a concern and love for Chinese people. And so it's a, a super trip. We, we drove about 10,000 kilometers <laughs> in our rental car in just two weeks. So we're uh, kind of glad to be back in the U.S., but kind of tired of it because this is our home. So it's good to be back here now and be back with you again where God's got a big plan going on here. Uh, real quick, let me just uh, say hello to our online visitors that are watching and uh, checking us out. Uh, it is really funny. We watched both services the last two weeks live online from wherever we at, which was sometimes driving our rental car down the road. And so I'm driving and I'm watching the band, the worship band, and then uh, Pastor Naya preaching. And that's, that's pretty cool. This is a special day that we live in. And I don't know if all you younger people exactly appreciate <laughs> the extent of modern technology as to what it is today. But some of you older folks, you know, remember... The old ways where telephones were bolted to the wall, and uh, now we're quite mobile. Very interesting. The point is, is let's use that to connect people with Jesus Christ, because I'm sure that is what God's plan is for this technology. Because I know the devil has a plan for this technology, and that's to cause people to stumble. Y'all know what I'm talking about there? He wants to use it for a negative thing. And uh, if I could get in the back, there's a little bit of ring in the sound up here. If you could uh, try, try and maybe in the monitor or something, take that out. Uh, so anyways, uh, we're glad you're all with us. And uh, if you're on Facebook, which we are now live, or uh, uh, YouTube, if you would just, you know, just send a message to somebody. Get your iPhone out right here and, and turn it on and say, hey, something cool is going on here on, uh, in Faith Family Church. This is a great message. We just had some great worship, and really, we do appreciate that worship band. Uh, when we were watching in America, they did a super job, and appreciate all of them working faithfully every Sunday to bring us into the presence of God, and our prayer team, which uh, uh, this isn't the only time they pray up front. I mean, they spend many hours praying at other times for this church. So just automatically, if you're a part of Faith Family Church, and that includes you people online, there's people that are praying for you. That's important in this day. <laughs> Amen? I mean, just imagine the people that have nobody praying for them ever. In this world, that's not a good idea, <laughs> okay? So, so thank God for our prayer team and the, the prayers that pray every Sunday and then throughout the week. It makes a difference. Because when people are praying and interceding on your behalf, God's able to do things to help you, to protect you from harm, to get you jobs that you otherwise wouldn't have had. You students, he'll help you to get uh, better studying and better remembrance when you take your final exams. That's what God is all about, is making our lives better, helping us to be closer to him. That's what we're all about here at Faith Family Church. And so back to our trip, it was very interesting. We talked to probably about half a dozen pastors that all have churches of 10,000 people or more or churches that are on their way to those numbers. Some pretty powerful people in the, uh, you know, in the church world. And I don't, you know, I'm not bragging about that. I'm just, it actually kind of makes me feel humble because I believe the reason is, is because this city is important. Not only are there many people, almost 7 million people in this city that need to know who Jesus Christ is, this city is a major city in this world. And as you all know, in Hong Kong, the world comes to Hong Kong to do business, to go then through and into mainland China to have things made like China has done like no other country. This is a very important city. And one of the first questions I was asked when I met some of these pastors, one of them, uh, for the first time to be able to really talk to him, he says, hey, what is going on there in Hong Kong? <laughs> well, yeah, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Yeah, there are like two million people out there. You know, what's, what's the big deal behind that? And, 
And so I shared with them, you know, and, and said, yeah, some of our church people are out there. Hopefully they're being good, <laughs> good protesters. And, and uh, it has a value. I mean, the, the world is watching when you're, you know, peacefully protesting for something that you strongly believe in. We understand that. And I say, you know, go Hong Kong, go. <laughs> because uh, this is a standard of what God is using this city to take Jesus Christ into mainland China. And when this uh, pastor was talking to me, he says, yeah, I was kind of, you know, interested because in just a, a few weeks, I go to Shanghai because we're connected with some people there that I help do some church training with. And I said, hey, great, that is awesome, but let me give you one hint. When you get up to start speaking, don't say, hey, so what's going on down there with all those protesters in Hong Kong? <laughs> no, 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 stay away from that subject and Tibet and Taiwan. Just talk about Jesus and you'll be okay. And I know all you Hong Kong people know exactly what I'm talking about there. But they're very interested in what's going on. I mean, the world right now is a very interesting place. And if you don't know Jesus, it's a very scary place. Because all this political stuff that's going on, the protests in Hong Kong, the political turmoil, the, the trade war with Trump and uh, President Xi, this is, this is all things that are secondary to one thing. And that's the gospel of Jesus Christ going to this world. That's what God is concerned with. That's why God has a great value on Hong Kong and Faith Family Church. Because we're not here just to, you know, have, have a little fun time and then go home. We're here because we're called to accomplish something great. Y'all believe that? <laughs> if, if not, I mean, wake up because it's going to happen. This church is going to be a very influential church in this city of Chunquano. We're going to reach out to this whole city of Hong Kong. And then we are going to do things that will help get the message of Jesus Christ into a billion unsaved people in mainland China. That's where we're going. I promise you, God wouldn't have called all of our family and, and had us totally give ourselves to, to helping you all reach this city if it wasn't a part of something big. So you all are, turn to your neighbor and just say, hey, we're a part of something big here. Yeah, go ahead. Turn to your neighbor. Say, hey, we're a part of something big here. That's about half of you. Now the other half of you turn to your neighbor and say, hey, we're a part of something big here. Amen. Well, I believe we are, and it's exciting, and, and the excitement of the people that we were meeting surprised me as to how interested they are in the current situation and things going on in China. It's exciting. If you're running with Jesus, you can be excited because thrilling things are going to happen in the future. So with that, let's jump into our message here. And uh, yes, we're starting a new series called Summertime at Faith Family Church, and we're just going to hit a few different messages here in the upcoming weeks. I know it, it's a little bit harder to do a series because I know some people travel, go on vacations and so forth. So we're just going to have fun and bounce around on a couple of things that'll be fun to hear and learn about. And the one thing we always try to do is we always want to give you something on Sunday that you can use on Monday. We try to be very practical, not religious or, ooh, you know, floating around spiritual thing. We don't want to go there. We want to, we want to help you win in life, succeed in life, in your families. It's so difficult, the family situations here in Hong Kong and, and uh, many other issues, your work situations, even family situations. But you all can win. You can make a difference in your families and in your own lives, especially when you connect with Jesus and do it his way. Amen? Okay. Let's jump into our message. And this message we're going to call, Who is My Neighbor? Now, that's an interesting one. Like, you know, oh, yeah, you've got kind of different neighbor situations. Like if you're on an estate flat, you've got some neighbors that live, you know, a few doors down. Uh, sometimes difficult to get to know them all. Or you might get to know a few people in your estate that you bump into at different times. And and that's all great, but that's not exactly what this is talking about when we refer to when Jesus asked this same question, or that question was asked of, asked of him. Who is my neighbor? Simply, what a neighbor is, or what that word means, is someone close. Okay? Someone close. On either side, you can be a neighbor to someone, which means you can be close, or uh, if someone is just close to you, they can be 
your neighbor. So the root of this word is closeness or somebody nearby. But Jesus uses this word in a very interesting story. And what we're going to do is take a look at this one question. Because this is what I want to, uh, you all will know if you are one of these three, three things by the end of this message. And that is there is a book called Givers and Takers. And it was written by a, a group of people who just, who aren't even Christian. They're just a secular group of people that studied society. And they came up with these three things that they found very consistently, statistically factual and interesting. And that's that all people fall into three categories. And those are takers, matchers, and givers. Which one are you? We're going to find out today which one of those three people you fall into according to this study. So let's start this in a very famous story in the Bible called the parable of the Good Samaritan. First, we'll just read this story, and then we're going to analyze it compared to several different bits of information to learn some things. So let's go to Luke chapter 10 and verse 25, and we'll start reading here. And it goes, on one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Let me just give you some in, some inside information right there. Don't ever test Jesus, okay? If you want to lose the test, get a bad grade, fail, stumble, test Jesus. It doesn't work. Jesus tests you, okay? So he's already off to a bad start, but you know, he had a good good answer here, which we'll see. He says, "Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Good question. What is written in the law? He replied, how do you read it? Jesus said, and he answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, with all your strength, and all of your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And then Jesus said, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But the man wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? And I just love Jesus. Jesus is Jesus. And Jesus does things the way nobody else does and nobody ever expects. So Jesus doesn't just answer his question. Jesus tells a parable. And the reason is, is because if you sometimes just give a person an answer... They don't get it because it's like, it's too easy. But if you make them think to the answer, the answer sticks because they concluded through their own thought, press, thought process the path to the correct answer. And this is where Jesus was the master. This is why he used parables because parables would cause people to think and come to conclusions that would stick rather than just arguing with them. So let's take a look at the parable the Jesus then said. So he replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side and didn't help the guy. He goes on to say, but then a Samaritan came. And as he traveled, he came to where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any expenses that you may have. Now, immediately as you look at this story, you might think, Oh, wasn't that Samaritan a nice guy? We should all try to be like Samaritans. Well, that's true. 
you can immediately see that, and that is one of the points Jesus is trying to make. But what you don't understand, if you don't understand who these three people were that Jesus used as examples, is how, like, in your face this was to the expert in the law who asked, who is my neighbor? He didn't just answer his question. He, like, pierced him through with a sword and caused him to almost have, like, an inner anger turmoil because of the people who were used. The, the priest and the Levite represented the highest level of people in the Jewish society. The, the, the priest was the one who did the, prepared the sacrifice for the sins of the nation, and, and the Levites were this special sect of people that were, that were set aside to, to be the servants of God and take care of the, the religious things that Israel must do. And so to say that those two people walked past this person was one thing. But then when he says a Samaritan, now this is where you have to understand history at this time. Samaritans were people, if you go way back, when Israel went into exile and went into Babylon, these Jewish people didn't go. They stayed up in a different area. It's kind of complicated, but anyways, that's where they came from, Samaritans. And because of this, there was, there was some discord and divide, which you know, you know how that always happens. I mean, the devil's always trying to get you divided against somebody else for some reason or another. <clears throat> well, these two people, when Israel returned to Jerusalem, these two people became enemies for, again, long story, but they hated each other. The Jews hated the Samaritans, and the Samaritans hated the Jews. And you can see this even in a few other Bible stories that occur. So for Jesus to say, a Samaritan came along the path and stopped and helped the person, oh my, that was causing this mental challenge inside the heads of these people. To maybe relate it a little bit to Hong Kong people, and I like Hong Kong people because you've got a little bit of pride about you. Proud to be a Hong Konger. Are you all Hong Konger? Proud to be Hong Well, I know you are because two million people showed up a couple weeks ago and said, we're proud to be Hong Kongers. And I like that because that's, that's my heritage. We're proud to be Americans, and that's okay. And that's kind of what Jesus used against these Pharisees and experts of the law, they were proud people, not necessarily for the right reasons. And so here's what Jesus said, by using these particular figures that put them in a turmoil, or say we use the same parable here in Hong Kong. What if I once said, let me tell you a parable about what a neighbor is. There was a, a up over in the mid-levels a while ago, there was a, a young Hong Konger boy, and he was on his way to school, and some triad gang members came out and beat him up, stole his money, and left him for dead on that big, long escalator that goes up and down, and he was just lying there. And then a Hong Kong banker on his way to work was going up the escalator and saw this young boy laying there, but he just kind of stepped to the other side and went on by. And then after that, a Hong Kong stockbroker was on his way to work, and he saw this young boy and just kind of stepped aside and went on his way to work. But then, a mainland Chinese political leader from Beijing who was visiting was also on that escalator on his way to do some business, and he saw that young Hong Kong Chinese boy. And so he got off the escalator and stopped and helped that boy. And he helped to fix his wounds and picked him up and carried him to a, a, a nearby uh, hospital where they bandaged him up and helped fix him up. And then he helped the guy, the kid financially to get back home and, you know, get some new school books or whatever he needed. Now, being a Hong Konger and especially the events that occurred in recent weeks here, do you see how that story just kind of like... Uh, yeah, okay, the political guy from Beijing and the other guy. This is what happened to the people that Jesus was talking to. So let's read on in the story. Jesus goes on to say after he told this parable, he says, which of these do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And Look at this reply. The expert of the law replied, 
the one who had mercy on him, which is very interesting. He says, the one who had mercy. It's like he couldn't even say the Samaritan because he hated Samaritans, and Samaritans hated him. So it's like he even skipped around that and just said, well, the, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus replied and said, go thou and do likewise. Oh, my. When you apply that Hong Kong story and, are told, and you can see that now in the, that was a powerful statement that caused, do you see if Jesus would have just answered, you should be a nice person if you're a neighbor, that would have been one thing. But to tell this parable, it put them in a mental quandary, if you understand that word, uh, uh, where it's, it's hard to even figure out because you know the right answer, but you don't want the right answer because you don't want to relate it to people that you don't like. But then that's kind of conf conflicting with the story because you should be, you know, kind and compassionate. So it was quite a challenge. Now, back to our book. This book called Give and Take, which was produced by this secular group of people, just taking these observances of people in society. And on their own, there, there was no religious motives behind this. You know, I don't know exactly what religious beliefs they might have had, but it was, it was not t intended to be some church group who says this or Bible study. This was just non-Christian, secular people came up with these conclusions. They said there's three people in this world, takers, matchers, and givers. Number one, takers... And they came up with these conclusions based on studies and observation and uh, research or polls, whatever it was uh, uh, that got them this information. Number one, takers, their focus is on getting things or looking out for themselves. This is one kind of person that they saw very clearly in society. These people use the word me or I regularly in their conversation and seldomly use the word we or us. Know anybody like that? Hopefully it's not you. So anyways, I'm sure that's other people you might know that might be like that. And they actually even studied some of their social media and found out that takers will often talk nice to you at the beginning of like when they're entering social media and don't have a lot of likes They'll talk really nice to you. But once they get an upper hand and an advantage and have more likes than other people, they'll shift and start talking down to even the very people that help them to get where they are. Anybody know school classmates that might be like that? Business colleagues that might be a little bit like that? Yeah. Well, there's a sector in society called takers, which was very clearly observed to be a certain group of people. Then they said there's another group of people that they studied. These people were called matchers. Now, what is a matcher? A match, you know, uh, if, if one thing matches another thing, it's the same kind of thing. So they're matchers, two similar things. You understand that English word. Matchers, they have a give only where you've been given to attitude. Give only where you've been given to attitude. Do you understand that? They're, they're not just trying to get. They will give, but only if they've been given to, or as we'll see, they keep a mental record of who helped them and will only work to repay those specific people. They don't give unless they see something they can get. Know anybody like that? Ever thought like that? Maybe yourself, just a little bit. It matches. That's what they are. A very distinct sector of society that this group identified. Then they identified a third sector of society that's very specific. And these are the ones called the givers. <laughs> and they saw and studied that the focus of these people is on others. Very simple. Uh, they actually observe they enjoy helping other people. And then they will even help people that cannot help them back. 
Isn't that interesting? How just a group could just study, just openly, with no motive, just study society and come up with these three different kinds of people. Which one are you? Let's go back to our story and see actually all three of these kinds of people in it. Very interesting. Uh, Back in Luke chapter 10 and verse 30, Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down to Jerusalem, uh, down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. These are takers. They didn't give anything. (laughs) They don't care about other people. They care about themselves and getting something for themselves. Very clearly, that one sector of society. And in this same story, we can see some matchers in uh, verses 31 and 32. Now, by chance, a priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. These are matchers. They saw that wounded person laying there and decided, there's nothing of advantage for me that I can get from this person So I'm not going to do anything for them. Now, if that person laying there happened to be maybe a very rich person or influential person, how many of you think that priest or that Levite might have thought, oh, that's the son of of, uh, Josephus, the wealthiest person in northern Israel. I will certainly help him, for I should receive a reward for my services. We see the matcher mindset and attitude. But since there was no reward, they went on by. But then we can also see in this very story, the givers. In uh, verse 33, but a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw the man that was wounded, he had compassion on him. The third sector of society. In this parable, Jesus not only shows us who a neighbor is, but he shows us how to be a good neighbor or a giver. And when you are a good neighbor and what a good neighbor does, let's take a look at it again. Number one, who is a good neighbor? would be people you don't know is what it's referring to. People that whatever point in life come close to you. Those are your neighbors. There are people that all of you know here or have heard of that are in other countries that you've never even been to or seen. Those people are not your neighbors by this definition because they're not close to you. So the point Jesus is making is who's close to you? Like, right around the place where you live. Those are your neighbors. Not just the person living next door, but the people around you that you can have compassion on. Those are your neighbors. The question is, what do you do when you see these people and come up to them, this other person, and you come close to them? Do you rob them? Do you walk past them? Or do you have compassion on them? Oh, but, uh, Pastor Steve, I like, you know, I haven't, if I saw, uh, like, a dude laying there bleeding, I would stop and help him right away. I really would. I, oh, really? Because you saw him bleeding. Okay. Maybe you've been on the MTR and haven't saw somebody bleeding, left for dead. But what about on the inside? Are there some hurting people that you've walked past on your journey to work and walked right past them on the MTR? People that are, have torn marriages, broken relationships, uh, totally discouraged, failed in their business, failed in their school grades, maybe even thinking about going to a nearby bridge or building and jumping off. What's the difference between those people and someone who might be physically beaten up and bleeding? Now, what does the good neighbor do? 
Yeah, maybe you don't beat up on those people, but do you walk past them? Do you ever ask them, hey, how you doing? I just kind of noticed you look kind of sad. Things are going all right. Can I pray for you if you having any troubles or hardships? Because I'm, I'm a Christian. I, I go to Faith Family Church, and we love to help people in our community. That's what the good neighbor would do, because when he saw him, and sometimes you don't see the physical, you have to see the spiritual. And if you're willing to do that, just say, God, on my way home today, or on my way to work, just show me the spiritual insides of some of the people that I walk past. And if there's just anybody that, that maybe I could help, just let me know. Give me a prompting because I will try to help them. And it may be as simple as, hey, you doing all right? You know, hey, well, you just kind of look kind of sad. Hey, here's a, here's a uh, business card for the, the church that I go to called Faith Family Church. If you just wanted to visit once, they can help you be encouraged. They can help your family get closer and be strengthened. They can, they can help you so many ways. Just, just wanted to tell you that. See you later. That could change a person's life. Are you willing to do that? Are you even trying to look? Who is your neighbor? People you don't know. Let's look at uh, verse 33 again. But when a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where the man was, <clears throat> he saw him and had compassion on him. That's the first thing you must do to be a good neighbor the way Jesus is talking about or pointing out. Number two, when is a person your neighbor? This one's very interesting. The answer is when someone is in need, not when it's convenient to you. Even if it's inconvenient or unexpected, as we see in this example here, in uh, verse 34, so the Samaritan went to him. Was the Samaritan expecting this guy to be there on his journey? I don't think so. He was just going from point A to point B, and suddenly he saw this person, and that person's need was now, not next week when he had an open spot on his, you know, uh, on his e-schedule that he could fit in to help the guy. The same thing will happen to you. If you're not willing to be inconvenienced a little bit, if you're not willing to just do a little bit of extra work or deal with an unexpected issue, God won't be able to use you as a good neighbor very often because these things happen at awkward times and places. That's not saying you just have to Throw your whole day away and just say, because just one person looks discouraged. No, you, you, can, you can do something. Let's look at the third one. What do neighbors do? They give time, attention, and resources, which oftentimes means money. That's what good neighbors do. Back to our story in verse 34. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds. That took time and resources. Pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own animal. That was taking out of his personal time to do something that he probably wasn't planning on doing. And brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii. That's money that he gave for this person who he did not know, but was his neighbor. And he gave it to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him, and whatever you spend on him when I come again, I will repay you for that. That's what Jesus put in front of these religious people that were a little bit high-minded into their, their wisdom, the wiseness of their own eyes. It's like Jesus is so clever. Instead of just saying, oh, you should be a nice guy and help people puts this parable that a person that they hate did something that they knew was the right thing, but had to kind of, how can I, how can I just bring those two together? Jesus was pointing on the action, 
not the place of some high mental state. Jesus was pointing that actions are more important than words or thoughts. And you could have all the thoughts in the world, like, oh, yeah, I wished, you know, I just, that's so sad that there's people starving in the world today, or, you know, all these bad things that happened, you know, to, to kids, and all, that's just so sad. That doesn't change anything. What changes things is actions. That's what Jesus said, and Jesus knew the hearts of these people. They had very little action. The religious leaders of these days, they just sit around and they talk about religious things. They figure out ways to make, you know, more challenging things for people to obey as far as, you know, what is sin and what is, what is work on the Sabbath and what isn't. That's what they do. They sit around and think and talk about that all day long. But they wouldn't go out and do anything, as Jesus gave the example. They wouldn't help a hurting person. That's what Jesus tells us we can do. So, ask yourself again. Very simple. Just according to this secular study. Are you a taker, a matcher, or a giver? You decide. You're smart. Just in case... You happen to classify yourself as a giver, we've got something that's just for you. You're going to love this because givers love other people. They enjoy helping other people. Next Saturday, this coming Saturday, six days from now, we have Serve Day on July 13th. And I'm so excited because I heard, you know, all the, the chatter on the, the WhatsApp strings of people planning things. We've got quite a number of things all over different places in the city of how next week people from Faith Family Church are going to get together and be good neighbors to different groups of people that probably can't pay you back. And that's what we do best because that's what being a, a son of God the Father is we are good neighbors to this city. That's how we're going to show it. And just once again, go ahead and put up this next one, wins for serve day. These are the wins that come to givers. Takers don't have any wins. Uh, it, it goes on to say that they are the, one of the most frustrated group of people. You'd think they'd have more and they'd be happy. No, takers have more, but then they have fear and anxiety and unfulfillment. They have the most unpleasant lives. And the matchers, the people in the middle, live boring lives because they're, they're never helping other people. They're just kind of taking care of themselves, but they're not, you know, they're not hurting. And they're just kind of in the middle there, and they just kind of, but they have unfulfilled lives. But then the givers, they're the ones who have the fulfilled life. They're the ones who wake up in the morning or go to bed at night with a smile on their face because they know they did something good for somebody else. And it just brings you a, a fulfillment on the inside. And any of you have done something like that, you, you have that fulfillment. That's the fulfillment that God himself has had in, in sending Jesus to this earth because he saw what it brought forth was, was a relationship with his people again. And Jesus the same way. They didn't come to steal from us or rob and, you know, and so many people are so silly. They think all the church wants is money. No, all the church wants is to help people. But it takes money to do that. That's why we're so, so willing to give so that we can help people because we enjoy it and get more fulfilled every time we do it. And so when we go out in some of these situations, it may cost money or it'll cost time or resources. But the payback is a win-win situation. Because number one, someone, go ahead and put that back up, someone will be touched. You'll touch someone. And if we went back through the years of Faith Family Church, we've done so many things here in this city or even in mainland China that changed the course of people's lives. Number two, you'll change. You'll do something that will just affect you. Again, the, the trips that we've been on into China and the things we've done here in this city have just it's just like, wow, I, 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 there's nothing I'd rather do that's more fulfilling than seeing people's lives, seeing people get set free 
from the power of the devil and come into the family of God. That's the most awesome thing. And uh, uh, invitations, you'll be able to invite people to Faith Family Church that you run into on this Saturday that, that might be saying, wow, I didn't even know this church existed, but I've been looking for something like that. Yeah, come on in. Relational connections with other ministry partners. There's other ministries out there trying to be good neighbors to people that they're reaching. And we'll connect with them to, to encourage even them to do more of what they're doing. And then the last one, favor with our city government. You know, people just really hammer politicians like, oh, they're all corrupt and they're all greedy. No, not all of them. And maybe they, they have problems in certain little areas, but not everything about them is, is about corruption and greed and power and evil. There's a lot of politicians that get into this because they want to try and make a difference with their lives and do something better for the society. And that's why they're politicians. And we actually have a very common ground with a number of them and know some of them right here in Chiricuano. And we want to connect with them so we have more opportunity to help the community. And when we do, they'll want to give us more power and resources to help helping people. So those are the wins that we will, just some of them. And I, like we said, another fantastic win is your kids. If you want your kids to grow up and be givers and not takers, which is kind of how kids grow up. You know, the first thing they do, yeah, I've got a lot of little grandchildren out there, and you know what they are? Takers! <laughs> they take everything. They, they take time, uh, they, take, they take money, because my wife just buys them all this stuff, and, you know, and they just take, 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 and they don't give a whole lot back, except they're just so cute, and you can hug them, and then they throw up on you. And then, but y'all y'all know that. They're takers. Then as they grow up, and kind of, you know, they probably get more like, you know, Hopefully, a little bit more like the matchers where, you know, they have certain chores they got to do, participate in the family. But when they get out into society, you want them to be givers? Well, here's the way. Take them out with you to serve somebody. Because I've seen this before. Some of the youngest of kids, I mean, they'll go out and serve and do something for someone, and it changes the way they think. It can be a culture in your family. We're givers. We just help people. We give in church. We give in schools. We give in our know, workplace. We just give, give, give. We just love giving. That's why we're so happy, because that's one of the benefits of givers. So take your kids with you when you go to do this. And so let's do one more thing here. Every Sunday at Faith Family Church, we want to give people an opportunity that may not know Jesus Christ to come into the family of God and make Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior. So right now, if you all would just uh, uh, bow your heads and and close your eyes, and uh, I'm just going to offer to pray a prayer, which is the first step you can take into getting close to God, your Father. And that's asking Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. And you've got to ask this from your heart. But like I did many years ago, you know, I, I listened to the pastor, repeated those words, but meant it in my heart, and my life changed that day. So that's you, and you're saying, you know, yeah, I... Uh, Pastor Steve, you just nailed me. I am taker city. That's who I am. <laughs> I'd kind of like to change that, but I don't know how. Well, we can help you. Just connect with Jesus. He'll take you every step of the way, and we'll help you also to develop a relationship with God and change your life from being a taker to a giver. So if you want to pray that right now, just pray these words. Dear Heavenly Father, I am a loser and a taker. I can see that everything is about me, but I'm not happy or fulfilled. And I want to change that. Because I can see there's something better. And it has something to do with you, God. So right now, I ask you to take my sin away. Forgive me for my sin. And I ask Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior. And I ask you, God, to show me a new way. So I want to become a giver. I want my life to make a positive difference. So I give to you, God, everything that I am, everything that I have. And I thank you for saving me.
Amen. And if you prayed that prayer from your heart, you've just given God permission to create your spirit brand new, just like Jesus Christ, which is what the Bible says. And when he does that, the Holy Spirit of God can now come and live inside of you. That's what the whole work of Jesus Christ was about, to get that to be able to happen. Because once that happened, God lives in you and he can talk to you. When he can talk to you, he can guide your life. And unfortunately, we still have a mind and a body that need to be renewed, but we're at least on the path of making those better because God wants to help us to do that. Then best of all, when we die, we go to be with him because he's our father. That's a good thing. So if that's any of you uh, in your chair, you'll see a connection card. And we just invite you to take that and look on the back and give us some information about you. Now, I know this is really tough because in today's world, everybody wants your email address and contact number so they can sell you a bunch of ads so they can take your money. But we're not going to do that. We want to give to you. We want to help you take the next steps in your relationship with Jesus Christ. So if you'll give us a contact number, you know, we won't send that to any other companies. Or, so you'll start getting ads and all that. Uh, <clears throat> we do want your money, but it's only so that we can help give to other people. We're not, we're not in this for the money. We're in this because we love giving to others. So if you made any of those decisions, you can check that. And when the uh, offering buckets pass by shortly, you can drop that in there. If you don't have enough time, there's also a giving kiosk in the back that you can drop uh, anything into there, either this card, or you'll also see there's an offering envelope in your chairs. And uh, <clears throat> before we go into describing this, we do have some good news. You know, a couple of you that have been here in uh, past weeks, um, we had an interesting thing that kind of happened here where, where uh, since we got into this place, our, we had a deficit, but every month it was getting smaller and smaller because people were wanting to give, and then all of a sudden it kind of took a downturn. I don't know what happened. Maybe half of y'all backslid, but praise the Lord, I think there's a revival happening in Faith Family Church. So go ahead and show that graphic. We were dropping down last month. We talked about this, but things turned around. So I think some people realize, no, that's not the way I want to see Faith Family Church grow. go. I want to see Faith Family Church grow and help me, my family, and this community. So praise the Lord. We had an, an upbeat in offerings and givings, and I thank every one of you who did that because I love this church. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, I mean, I don't receive a salary from this church. I'm just like you. I give to this church because I want to help reach this community, as do many people in America like we just visited. They love the Chinese people, and they know there's a lot of unsaved Chinese people. Y'all know that? Yes. And they want to do something about that. So that's how they help us to be here, so we can help you to see, again, the vision and stand against the, the strongholds that the devil has in this city. We can overcome those, and we can become good neighbors to people to show them there's a better way. So praise the Lord. When we give, we advance the gospel of Jesus Christ in this city, and then eventually we will be doing some things out of Faith Family Church that will reach the entire city and reach mainland China. And many, many, many people will come to know Jesus because of all the contributions of us put together. Is that good news? So if you want to put your offerings or your tithes, you can put those in here, drop those into the bucket or into the giving kiosk in the back. And just, if you didn't know, we even have an online giving system where you can give online, which I know especially you millennials like to do. So just get on our website and uh, you can check that out and give through there. So uh, one more quick announcement. Uh, all church prayer is today at uh, 2 p.m. In the back, we'd encourage any of you that like to pray, come on back at 2 p.m. Pastor Sharman will be heading that up, and there'll be many of us back there praying for the steps that are next for this church, the steps that are needed to be taken to reach this city, and for our serve day, which is also coming up uh, this coming Saturday. Now, does anybody have a shirt? Somebody get me a shirt here real quick. In the back, as you go out the door, You'll see one of our special Serve Day shirts. They come in different sizes and shapes, depending on which size and shape you are. But uh, these are free for everybody who is willing to serve. Now, if that one would fit me, 
but it says uh, serve team on the front and faith family church on the back and as we will all be, oh I see a bunch of you already wearing those I thought you just happened to coincidentally be wearing red shirts but yeah you already got those on there welcome oh you're the welcome to faith family church welcome team well anyways praise the Lord we'll be wearing these and one of the reasons is, is so other people see them because they'll, some of them will just come up and say Hey, why y'all wearing red shirts? <laughs> well, there's a very good reason. It's because we're good neighbors, <laughs> and we want to help people in this community. And there's some people that say, wow, that's pretty cool. As examples from this is actually a worldwide thing going on now. All over the United States, thousands of churches and people will be involved this coming Saturday. Now, here's the best part. We, in Hong Kong, will be serving first because we're 12 hours ahead of America. So we'll do all of our serving and we can tell them about what a good time we had, but then they'll be doing it all across the world. Uh, dozens of countries are involved in this, this serve day, which is a witness to our community. And this is a statistical fact, which I had mentioned before. The churches, <clears throat> when you look at certain key characteristics of churches that are growing and reaching their community for Jesus, one of those is they are visible which means people know, oh, you go to that church. <laughs> yeah, Faith Family Church, that church that shows up wearing red t-shirts on serve day and do, you know, has advertisements and you hear these testimonies of people that lives have been changed. Oh, you go to that church. Yeah, that's what we wanna become is that church. So let's, uh, if you, everyone is invited to be a part of this, even typically, Basically, we've done this out of our small groups, but you don't have to be a part of a small group in order to be show up on serve day and serve. And so I'll let my son, uh, Pastor Nye here, can uh, share a little bit more about this in one second on how to connect if you're not connected. Everybody, we hope, will connect and come and serve, and he'll show you where or how to get connected if you're not connected yet, okay? Y'all wanna be a good neighbor? I hope you don't want to be a bunch of thugs who, you know, takers and all. No, we want to be good neighbors. So uh, with that, ushers, if you want to go ahead and pass the buckets, I'll turn this over then to Pastor Naya, and he will share with you the rest of the information. So as Pastor Steve said, our serve day is, is being run by our small groups, and there are a number of ways you can join. If you're not in a small group already, you can, number one, just come talk to me after this service today. I'd love to help you get connected, or if you know of a small group leader, just go ask them how to join uh, one of the Serve Day projects. Number two, you could send a, a WhatsApp message to the church phone number. It's on the website, or you can find it in the info center. Just send a WhatsApp saying, I'd like to be a part of Serve Day, and someone can help you through WhatsApp to get connected with a group. Or number three, we are encouraging everyone to download the Serve app. If you just search Serve Day in uh, the, any app, app store, Google, or or Apple, and you can download the app, and we'll have our projects listed in the app under Faith Family Church Hong Kong, and you can find a project that way and, and join that way. So we'd encourage you, uh, no matter if, the, even if it's your first time this week, jump on in. Yeah, a number of uh, the groups will be going to different elderly home visits. So some will be in Chern Kwon Oh, some will be outside of Chern Kwon Oh, I think in Kowloon or the New Territories. So a number of groups are doing that, uh, maybe hour, hour and a half. So again, it's this Saturday, six days away, and it's not too late to be a part. Even if you find out that morning, you could join. Uh, it's not too late. So on your way out, be sure to grab a t-shirt. One note on the shirts, the sizes are kind of off because of um, the sizing change. We ordered them from China. So there's some XXXLs, and those equal like extra. Let me start this way. There's mediums. Mediums equal extra small. Larges equal small and you know, you can figure it out. So just go back there. They're sorted out on the tables. Just find one that will fit. Also grab some for your kids as well. They can wear them too. Um, put the shirts on even to, if they're a little too big, that's fine. So grab some for yourself, for your kids. If you're not sure if you can make it or not, just grab one anyways. And we'll, we'll probably use them again next year as well. And uh, also there's some business cards and some invitation stuff back there on the table you can take to be able to hand out to the people that you'd want to invite to church on serve day as well. So all that's right there as you're walking out.